Welcome, 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 Be Holy, Be Perfect community. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. What a wonderful time it is to be serving the Lord. What a wonderful time it is to be serving the Lord. We may look at what's going on in the world and say, oh my God, how can you say that? Well, God is the same yesterday and today and forever. And the righteous, the righteous, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. So we are safe in the name of the Holy One. We are safe in the name of the Almighty God. We are safe in the God of the universe. So we are safe uh, and we need to know and believe that we are safe. Uh, it can be very uh, disheartening to see what's going on around us, but we are not abandoned by God and we should not feel abandoned by God because of what is going on in the world. We are finishing up the bolted door, uh, the impact of the bolted door. We are on impact 16 and this is the last uh, impact we will be talking about regarding the bolted door. We will move on to something else, uh, how God leads lead us. Uh, so the last and final impact, and it's not, uh, all con consuming. It's not, this is not like all of them. These are the, this, uh, ones that I have been discussing. And this one is the feeling of abandonment be being, uh, feeling abandoned by God. And we can, by feeling abandoned by God, we will also feel abandoned by others. But God, his love endures forever. His love endures forever for his saints, for his people. So um, when we feel abandoned by God, it is because of something that has happened in our lives that has caused us to stand inside a crime scene. Uh, and when we stand inside a crime scene, we will definitely feel abandoned by God and abandoned by others. Psalm, seven, Psalm 37 and 23, the steps of a righteous man, the steps of a righteous man, uh, <clears throat> hear this translation say good, but in the original text, it says the steps of a righteous man, the steps of a holy man are directed and established by the Lord when he delights in his way and he uh, bruise, uh, boozes himself with, busies himself with every step when he busies, busy himself with every step. Now let us say that again. The steps of a righteous man are, are directed or ordered by the Lord and established by the Lord when he delights in his ways and he is busy. He busies himself with every step. Though he falls, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord grabs his hand. The Lord grabs his hand and support and uphold him. The Lord grabs his hand and support and uphold him. No matter how many times we fall, the Lord's hand is there to pull us out of the pit, to pull us up out of whatever we have fallen in or whatever we have done decisively walked into uh, because of life situations, because we live in a fallen world, because we have chose to sin or someone has uh, sinned against us. The steps of a righteous man are directed and established by the Lord. When this righteous man delights in his ways and he busies himself with every step when he busies himself with every step towards God and what and walking in the law of the Lord walking in the law of the Lord being subject and obedience to the government of God this is these are the righteous steps of a righteous of a holy man of a godly man and when I say man I mean person or woman uh, as well. Psalm 37, 25, I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the uncompromising righteous forsaken or their seeds begging for bread and their seeds begging for bread. This is a verse that we should all memorize and put in our spirit. And this will halt. It will halt the fear 
uh, of what we see going on around us in this world. He says, what I have been young and now am old, yet have, yet I have not seen the uncompromisingly righteous forsaken, forsaken or their seeds begging for bread. In other words, the Lord will not forsake the righteous. He will not forsake the righteous. And if we are righteous, we have an inheritance that we can give to our children that they will not beg for bread. If you are going to um, a food pantry or a place where they are giving uh, food, you are not begging. The Lord has prepared this for you so that you will not have to beg for bread. Some people are so proud, so uh, dis uh, that they will not uh, receive the blessing that the Lord has set up in the different food pantries where, where the Lord has set up, whether the food pantry is godly or it is a social or circular food pantry, go and get help if you need it. That is a door that God has opened for us us so uh if you need it get it if you don't need it help someone that need it get it uh let's not be uh ignorant of the word of god uh the lord prepare a way for his people he say what he have not seen the righteous the uncompromisingly righteous forsaken or their seeds begging for bread so when god opened the door for us let us walk through that door psalm 37 and 26 all day long they are merciful and dear graciously they lend and their offsprings are blessed they lend and their offsprings are blessed See, we are sometimes trying to pay for blessings and we don't have to pay for blessings. Look, when we are righteous, when we stand righteous before the living God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, I, we will be blessed and our offsprings will be blessed. That is the law. That is written in the word of God. Here it is. So how do we be blessed? <laughs> he didn't say pay for anything. He didn't say your tithes are going to bless you. He said what? He said all day long they are merciful. All day long they are merciful and deal graciously and lend and their offspring are blessed. What? So when we lend, when we give to someone when we give to the poor when we give to god's people what our offsprings will be blessed and he say do what he said <clears throat> depart from evil and do good and you will do well forever securely depart from evil and do good and you will what you will do well securely forever so when we say that we uh don't feel like god is with us why that is it's just not true because if we are living a righteous and holy life, the Lord is with us. The Lord will not abandon us. So we don't need to feel abandoned. We feel abandoned because we believe what the world say and not what God say. Psalms 37 and 28, for the Lord delight in justice and forsakes not his saints. He forsake not his saints. He forsake not his holy one. He forsake not the godly. They are preserved forever. They are preserved forever. But the offspring of the wicked in time shall be cut off. But the offspring of the wicked shall be cut off. Now, who is cut off? The wicked. Who is preserved forever? The righteous, the saints of the Lord. Psalms 37 and 29. Psalms 37 and 29. Then the Lord consistent, then the consistently righteous shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. The consistently righteous, not the on this day and the off this day in righteousness, not a sinner this day and say that we're righteous the next day, not a false religion that says that we can do anything outside of God, not a supermarket religion where we go into and shop around for the promises of God and leave the laws of God outside. You see, the promises of the Lord are connected to the law of the Lord. It is protect, protect, pro, it is connected to the things that the Lord has said. Every, every single one of the promises of God has a condition. The word of, of God is not unconditional. The word of God and the promises of God is not unconditional. We have to respond 
to the law of God. And what do we say the law of God? It is the government of God. If we live in the kingdom of God, in the household of God, there has to be rules. There has to be regulation. There has to be laws. There has to be instruction. And so the word of God is the instruction book. The, the Torah is instruction. So, uh, we uh, want to say that uh, we don't, we are not under the law, but we are, we are not, we are not under the law of the law of sin and death, but we are under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. We are under the spirit of the law of what of the law of Moses under the five books of Moses, the prophets and the writings. We are under that. We are that. That is what makes up our 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 our, our concept, our, our our rules of governing our lives. So when see, uh, we need to learn uh, what uh, the difference between spirituality and religion is, so that we understand. Uh, what the requirements of God is for us. Some people are religious, but they are not holy. Some people are religious, but they are not godly. Some people are religious, but they do not live by the government of God. See, there, 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 there is those are different differences, and we have to understand those differences. Uh, some people speak when we speak against uh, being perfect and. Uh, in the kingdom of God, we, we are speaking against God. So therefore it creates a spirit of abandonment by, by God in people's mind. So we are not abandoned by God. God is with us. He is with us. He loves us. He will not forsake us. If we are what, if we are consistently righteous, if we are consistently holy. So when people twist the word, it twists the thinking of, of an, an individual. So let us know that we're safe in God, that we are not abandoned by God. He has explained to us in these verses, Psalm 37, 23 through 29, who he will not forsake, who he will not forsake, who he will not forsake. The Lord will not forsake the saints. He will not forsake the righteous and the uncompromisingly righteous. He will not forsake the saints. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you and shine his face upon you. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord.